Okay, so today we're going to be tackling this mind-bending animation loop in Blender. It loops seamlessly and it's actually really easy to make, which you'll see as a walk through the process step by step. And if you do make a variation of this render, feel free to tag me on Instagram. My handle is at Nedmotion and I'll be leaving that down below. Alright, let's jump straight into it. Right, so once you've got Blender open, we're just going to delete that default cube, so just hit X and delete. I hit Shift A, add a mesh and we're going to add a torus. Now come to this menu here and just expand that. We're going to pump up the major radius to about 6 and we'll pump up the minor radius to about 4. Now just click out of that, you're going to lose the menu now. Now just click on your camera and hit Alt G and then Alt R. That resets the location and the rotation. Now we're going to hit RX 90, so we face the camera along the Y axis. And we're just going to hit G and then Y. So we lock onto the Y axis and we're just going to bring it inside the torus. Just pop it to about there, hit zero, so you can go into camera mode. Great, now I want to make a few more edits to this torus, but as you can see, I've lost that menu that I had before. So I'm just going to delete the object, so just click on it, hit X, delete. I just add it again, so Shift A, add a mesh, and add a torus. And you're going to get this menu back again. Uh, basically, anytime you click out of it, and then you start editing other objects, you end up actually losing access to this menu. So just adding the object again should bring this back for you. Uh, now I want to make a few more edits to the minor radius, so I'm just going to pump that up a bit. We'll say about there, pump up the major segments to about, say about 100, and the minor segments, we'll say about 70 on the minor segments. Great, that's all the modelling done for the torus now, so we're going to come out of this menu. Just make sure you've got your torus selected, and we're going to hit S and then Z. I'm just going to scale it in a bit, we'll say about there, that looks good. Now I'm just going to click on my camera, and I'm just going to go to the camera settings here, I'm just going to drop the focal length. We'll say about 25 millimeters. I think that looks cool. All right, great. So now we're going to go to our modifier section and we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add simple deform. And as you can see, as you start to pump up the angle, you get this really cool twisting effect on the torus. We're going to pump that up to about 240. Set the axis to the Z axis. Now hit Shift A. We're going to add an empty and we're going to add a cube. And we're going to use this cube to control the twisting deformation on this object. So to do that, click on your torus. On the origin here, on your deform modifier, you want to click on that and you want to set it to your empty. Now if you click on your empty, you can animate the rotation on the y-axis and it's going to affect the deformation of the mesh. So let's animate this to rotate 360 degrees so we get a perfect loop. So I'm going to make this a 10 second loop, so I'm going to set the end frame to 240. We're at 24 frames per second, do the math, that will be a 10 second loop. Alright, now on your first frame, I want you to apply keyframe on the y-axis. And now I want you to come to 241, come to the y-axis again, change that to 360 and apply keyframe. And now with your mouse inside the timeline, I want you to hit A and then T and change the interpolation to linear. Great, so we're halfway there, we're just going to come to file and we're going to save that. So just save your project. We're going to start shading it now. Cool, so once you've saved your project, we're going to jump into rendered mode. So hit Z and then 8. This is going to allow us to start adding some color and lighting to the scene. So we're going to be using emission shading to actually light the scene. So we don't need this light here. So click on your light, hit X, and then delete that. I'm going to come to my world settings here, and we want it to be black. So we're just going to bring this slider all the way down. Click on your torus. We're going to add another modifier, and we will add a wireframe modifier. And now you see that's replaced all the faces and added sort of a wireframe mesh on top of the edges of each subdivision of this object. So the first thing I'm going to do is just untick this checkbox here which says replace original and that's going to basically bring the faces of the mesh back so we get sort of a wireframe on top of the mesh. Come to the material properties, click on this little red thing, we're going to add a new material. So click new. This is going to be our base material so it'll be the material applied to the face of the object. This one isn't too important. I think we're just gonna leave it a sort of dark gray. Don't worry too much about that. So we're gonna add a new slot, add a new, need to change the surface on material two to an emission. And now if you come back to your modifier settings, come to your wireframe bit here, and now you see this little material offset here. We wanna set that to one. That's basically assigning the wireframe modifier to this material slot here, this emission one. We're gonna pump that up to 10. And we're going to make it a nice sort of uh, sci-fi looking blue color. And we'll go back to the modifier properties. And we're going to drop the thickness of this wireframe to 0 0.005. Great, so we're pretty much there now. I'm just going to go to the render properties. And I'm just going to add bloom just to give it a little bit of a glow. Bring the intensity down a bit. Make sure you set your render engine to EV. And then we're going to go down to the color management. Change the look to very high contrast. 
say if you work we're going to go to our output settings and then your output directory just save that somewhere you can find it this is where the render is going to come out so yeah just save it somewhere you can find it you don't really want to leave it in the tmp folder set your file format to ffmpeg video encoding set that to mp4 video codec leave that as h264 output quality you want that as perceptually lossless all you got to do is go to render and hit render animation and you're done Right, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed the tutorial, if you did please leave a like and subscribe, it really helps me grow the channel, and if you want to support me directly, consider subscribing to my Patreon, I'll be leaving a link to that in the description, and if you did make it to the end, feel free to tag me in your render, you can follow me on Instagram, that's at themmotion, if you tag me in your render, I'll share it to my story, share the love and all that, and also I'll be leaving a link to the project file in the description if you want to play around with that, or you can find it on my website, that's nebmotion.co.uk.